What's up everyone, in today's video we are going to be giving you some tips and tricks about how you can improve your sales call process, your discovery call process and hopefully start closing more clients as a result. Let's roll the intro and get straight into the video. How's it going everyone, Dylan here and today we're going to be talking about how you can improve your sales process, how you can close more clients, all as a result of improving your discovery call process. Now, this is the second time I've tried shooting this video. A minute ago the camera just fell off the tripod, maybe we can put in an outtake if we have it. Um, but today I'm going to be talking to you about exactly that, how you can do a better job on your sales calls. I've had quite a few of you ask me this question on Instagram and in my Facebook group and that's why I've decided to put this video together. Uh, but before we get into the video, if you are new around here, my name is Dylan Hay. I also run my own digital marketing agency. We run paid ads for SaaS companies. And of course, I have my own personal brand too. That's why you're here. So if you want to learn more about how you can build and scale your personal brand, your agency, and just see more helpful videos like this one, do me a favor, hit that red subscribe button and uh, give this video a thumbs up and a like if you enjoy it. And please let me know in the comments down below where you're watching this from and maybe uh, how your discovery calls are going because I want to hear from more of you and I will engage with every single one of you down in the comments below. So today we're going to be covering five, actually no, six even, six key steps that you can implement to improve your discovery calls. And the very first one, this is a common mistake that I see a lot of you making and a lot of people making. I used to do this as well. When I first got on a discovery call with a potential new client, I would always say hello, start with a little bit of small talk, and then eventually I would end up letting them lead the conversation. I think a lot of you will do this too. And the issue with that is, first of all, you can never have a clear structure to your call if you let them lead the conversation. But secondly, immediately you're giving the power to them. And what I mean by letting them lead the conversation is letting them start by asking questions, letting them start by telling you what their business is all about and what they do. What you really need to do, and this is the first step, is position yourself as the authority figure in this relationship and set the, uh, set the frame for how this call is gonna go and take control of the conversation. It's really important you take control of the conversation. That way you can steer the conversation in whichever direction it needs to go in as you continue and you hold the power throughout the call too. They know that you're the person that's leading this. And the way that I do that is by setting some expectations so we'll do a little bit of small talk first usually i'll ask them where they're calling me from or how their day is going or anything like that just one question and then we'll get straight into things so i'll say hey look the way that i usually structure these calls is very clear very simple to make sure that you get the best use out of this time and then i'll explain them what i do so i'll tell them that i will start by asking you a few questions about yourself and your business learn some key metrics about the company because that's really important to us when we can position whether or not we're right to work with you and then i'll just want to find out a bit more about you and if i think that we're a good fit to work together i'll tell you more about myself more about my business our agency how we work and uh, and then set some next steps does that sound okay with you and it's really important to ask them that question does that sound okay with you because of course they're going to say yes and we want to get them saying yes and agreeing with us as much as we can throughout the call uh, just because then we can lean on their like cognitive bias of if they're saying yes a lot it's easier to get them to say yes when you have an important question to ask them. So that's step number one. Tell them the purpose of the call, tell them how you usually run it and take control from the beginning. And then step number two is once we've done that, I like to always kick things off with a nice big open-ended question to get them talking about themselves and their company because ultimately like we need them to be talking 80% of the time and us to be talking 20% of the time. On these discovery calls, you just need to listen, you need to take in information. I record all of my calls so that I don't have to take a ton of notes, uh, but you can take notes if you, if you want to, but you need to be listening and you need to get them talking. That way they're gonna feel more comfortable with you and you have to make it clear that you're listening to them. So I start with a nice big open-ended question. Usually I'll say something like, hey, look, business owner, let's use their name. I understand that you have a very busy day, a very busy schedule. So I really wanna know, why did you take the time out of your day today to speak with me? And then just shut up and let them talk. And they'll usually go on and on for a couple minutes about like, to be honest, they usually give you some very high level answer that isn't, isn't super important, but usually they'll tell you a bit more about where they're at with their company right now. They'll tell you that they wanna do paid ads or social media or whatever it is that you're offering. And um, they'll just tell you about maybe a couple of their problems, but they'll be very, very high level problems. But the most important thing is, they're talking like you have to remember with a discovery call 
the whole purpose is to be like a diagnosing their problems. It's almost like you're a doctor, right? If someone goes to a doctor, they'll tell you their problems, you'll listen to them, you'll think about whether or not you can help them, and then you'll offer them the best solution. And that's what you want to do on these sales calls. So step number two, start by asking a big open question, get them comfortable, get them talking, and um, start remembering what they're saying so that you can use it further on into the call. Then step number three, after we've done that initial question, I like to then go into like diagnosing mode and start asking a lot of important questions around the business and also around them emotionally. So for me, I run paid ads, right? And I understand the most important metrics that I need to know to prove whether or not we can generate ROI for a business. So you always wanna be thinking about when you're talking to a business owner, working with a business owner, positioning them a new service, you have to show them a clear path or a clear process to revenue. You have to show them that you understand this is point A where they're at, this is point B where they wanna to get to creating more revenue and you have to show them how to do that. And the only way you can do that is by understanding important business metrics. So for me running paid ads, we need to know what the lifetime value of a customer is. We need to know how many free trials they need to get to convert them into paid customers, so what their conversion rates are. We need to know how much revenue they did last month, how much revenue they do every month, uh, what their goals are for the next 12 months. So during this third phase of the call, you need to be asking lots of probing, diagnosing questions. Things like, tell me about your current customer acquisition process. Are you happy with your current customer acquisition process? Tell me about how you do digital marketing. How much revenue did you do last month? How much revenue do you plan to do next month? What's the lifetime value of a customer for you guys? What's your free trial conversion rate? Uh, what's your average order value? Where do you want the business to be one year from now? Where is the business right now? Like all these kind of questions. And try and make sure you also focus on where they are now and where they want to get to because we use that later on in the call to like sell back to them or relay back to them. So that's step number three. This is where most of the time is going to be spent. Again, you want them to do most of the talking, but you have to probe with the right kind of questions. Don't just be asking bullshit questions for no reason. Ask questions because they're important to you when you're positioning the service further down the road and ask questions that show you know what you're talking about. So that's really, really important. Then step number four, if after going through all of this information with them, you feel genuinely like there's a way that you can help them and a way you can support them, this is where we then tell them that. So I will always thank them for sharing all of this information with me and tell them that it's been really interesting, I've taken some really good notes, etc. And then I'll say, okay, look, I feel like potentially there's definitely a way we can help you out. And from the conversation we've had so far, I'm confident that the two of us could work together very, very well. Would you like to hear more about how Hey Digital works with our clients? That's my agency. And it's important that I ask them for permission. So I ask them, would you like to hear more about this? Because they're always gonna say yes. And then again, we're leaning on the cognitive bias of getting them to say yes, so that further down the line, when we ask for something important, it's easier to get them to say yes. So just always remember that, try and get them agreeing, nodding their head, saying yes as much as possible. And then this is where, again, we're proving that we have control because we're saying, okay, look, you've told me about you, I think, we're a good fit, like I understand what you're talking about and I think we could definitely help you out. Do you wanna hear how? So you're still like not guaranteeing that you're gonna work with them but you're showing that you understand you could help them out and that way you remain controlled in the conversation. A lot of you guys will actually just be letting them take control and be like, hey, tell me more about your pricing or tell me more about what you do. So set that potential first, tell them that you can work with them, ask them for their permission. Then. What I like to do is start to then, if they say yes, which they will, that's when I start to tell them more about my agency, our services, previous results we've had. And I'll start by telling them more about my agency. So I'll use the positioning and I'll tell them about, okay, like for me, I work with SaaS companies, right? So I'll tell them a couple of stories about SaaS companies I've worked with in the past that grew very quickly and all that kind of stuff. But it's really important to use the information they've told you so far throughout the call and use that to sell back to them. So rather than just telling them, oh, we're a digital marketing agency, we do paid ads, Use some stories that you have based on the pain points they've told you so far throughout the discovery call and use them as your positioning points and use them to sell back to them. So if they've told you, okay, our, our trial to paid customer conversion rate right now is really high, but we're not getting enough trials in the door, then I'll tell them about a story of another customer we worked with that had a similar issue and we managed to 10X the amount of trials they got or whatever it was. And I'll share that story with them and explain it throughout to them. So this is where you can really sell back to them based on what they told you. And that's why it's really important to cover these key things. And then step number five, we've covered this a couple times already, but step number five is to make sure they're saying yes and agreeing with you a lot. You do this throughout the call, but also towards the end of the call. And you can do that by uh, asking questions like, so you told me you're at X amount of revenue right now, that's correct. Yes, and they'll say, yeah. And you wanna get to 
this amount of revenue in the next 12 months, is that correct? They'll say yes. So keep getting them to say yes. Then say, okay, so you wanna be generating more leads, right? Yes. Um, your business would look much better if you were getting five times the amount of trial signups, five times the amount of purchases, right? Yes. Like start asking these questions where they're gonna say yes and then start pre-framing them. So say, and you can see that uh, paid ad services are gonna help you with that, right? Yes. Uh, you can see that digital marketing is important to this, right? Yes, like all these kind of things, start getting them to say yes. And then the sixth and final step for me personally, and not all of you will agree with this and not all of the other mentors and coaches out there will say this, a lot of you are going for one call closes, which is totally fine if you wanna do that. I don't do that just because for me personally, the businesses that we work with, they're not always ready to invest immediately. And also we need some more in-depth information before we can definitely say that we can help them or not and I like to be a bit more picky. So my sales process is two steps. I do this initial discovery call, and then the next step for me is getting their access to their Google Ads accounts and their Facebook Ads accounts. My team and I go away and do a mini audit, and then we have another call with them in a couple of days where we go through the proposal on the call, and then we get a yes or a no. So I have a two-step process. You don't have to do that, but for me, that works really well. So step number six is if you're going for a one call close, then this is when you start positioning to the sale. So getting them to say yes, and then start transitioning to the sale. But I'm not gonna teach that because I don't do that. So for me, we have this next step and I explain to them what our process looks like moving forward. I tell them that our sales process is very fast and we can move very quickly. All that we need from you next is access your Google Ads account and your Facebook Ads account and your Google Analytics. And I'm gonna send you instructions of how to do that. Is that okay? They'll say yes. And then I'll say to them that we we'll go through that, we'll do a small audit, and then in a couple of days time, we'll get on a phone call where we'll go over our pricing with you. We'll show you a bit more in depth exactly what our process looks like, show you some previous case studies and clients that we've worked with. And then by the end of that call, we're in a position where we can make a decision. We either go forward or we don't go forward. Does that sound okay? And they'll say yes. So then instead of just agreeing to that, I set the next call on this current call. That's really, really important. I get their schedule, we work together and we book in a time in like four or five days time for me because that gives me and my team time to go and do the audit and get access to the accounts, etc. So we book in a time when we have that next call. I put it in my calendar, I put it in their calendar and then we wrap up the call there. And since I switched my discovery call process to this and started asking questions like this and doing these steps and then adding in the second step, things have been starting to go really well for me and my agency and we've been progressing very quickly with these calls. So that is my like six step process about what you should cover and how to do a perfect discovery call. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Let me know down below in the comments what your discovery call process looks like. If it's similar to this, if it's different to this, I'm open to feedback and criticism for all of you. Uh, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give it a like, subscribe to the channel and I'll be back again very soon for a ton more action-packed, helpful videos on how you can grow your agency, how you can grow your personal brand. And yeah, that's it. I'll see you all very soon.